Hello and welcome to Candle Yellow. Now this is the edition which is for the higher grades and I believe every candle encourage you to learn 21st century life skills. And this is no exception. And we jump right to the first theme which is life skills, creative thinking. Now creativity is so absent in today's world in schools, in shopping centers, in educational areas, in office spaces that sometimes I wonder what it really means to be creative, perhaps do our children understand and appreciate it. So what we have done is always there are three activities in creative thinking and we'll break each of them down for you to understand and do side projects along with what is in the text. In a A1 and A2, which is the first activity, we are talking about how do you get creative. And we have taken one of our favorite themes which you see around is ice creams. I mean, ice creams are so generic in nature, ice creams are so popular, ice creams are so everybody that you immediately have a smile. We all have a lot of memories associated with ice cream. So our first A1 says create a spider di di uh, diagram for the topic. Now, what do you mean by spider diagram? It should be diagram, not dragon. But the funny part is, you know, spider has these legs. What you do is you put the word ice cream in the middle and you create a lot of legs there. And then you start talking about all the words that you have to use and how does it evoke a memory of an ice cream into it. So let's say my first word is emotion. What emotions come with ice cream? I'm, of course, it has to be joy, victory, celebration. That Those are the words. Memories? Perhaps it could be a birthday, could be a party, could be a wedding, could be picnic, could be something that is after dinner. Flavors. Of course, there are hundreds of flavors. I love the whole idea. Why don't you do a side activity on ice cream? Now, as I always do, a lot of things have to be done. You are doing a classroom project, not just a text reading. So side activities, Baskin Robbins have the whole tagline called 31. You know why they call themselves 31? Because they have these 31 flavors that they are very, very popular with. What about finding all the 31 flavors? With the kind of flavors we have, how about taking a printout of these 31 flavors and then, you know, for example, there's praline pale or, or candy, cotton candy. What do you, you break the words and put cotton in one basket, uh, candy in another basket, almond in another basket, honey nut in another basket and the team, you can take two printouts of such and the team that come with the correct 31 is the winner. It's fun. Also, maybe another small side project is you create 10 new flavors of ice creams. Oh, that will be wonderful. So those are the emotions that you use and those are the words we use. So we give you two activities. Believe me, if you only do these two side activities, it will be class, will be chaotic and fun. And as one of my friends just read a book on Sal Khan from the Khan Academy, he says, little chaos is important. Amidst the chaos, you find a beautiful routine. So do that. Another word you can associate with party, children. Oh, children is one of the most amazing word you can associate with ice cream, isn't it? But it's not only children. You can find adults loving ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream. If allowed, thanks to my tummy, I can have one every day or after every meal. So that's wonderful. Types of ice cream. Oh, there is one in the cup, cone. What kind of cones you can have? Stick are popular. Uh, popsicle ones are ice cream. Are they called ice creams? So these are your choices to have. Then you have brands. Oh, there are so many brands. I just mentioned Baskin Robbins. There is a popular Indian one called Have More. There is Ice Craft. There is Moon Pick. You know, the, 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 the ice cream brands are all over walls or Amul or quality. And there is an act activity you can do only on ice cream brands. So that's another one. Another word that comes to ice cream is Summers. So, you know, what about summers? Why only summers? In fact, you know, it says that after toothache, it's better to have an ice cream. So you can use these and let this be as big a spider diagram as possible. And they can write all these words and these words have sub words that you can play around with. I'm sure your creative juices are now flowing and probably what better way than top it, top it up with an ice cream party, actual one in your class it's the first activity of the of the book and you are absolutely surprising them with this amazing ice cream a2 we have already done a lot of a2 connect the circles with the words that come to your mind for ice cream it's the same thing but we're just doing it in a mind mapping way the earlier one a1 or the spider diagram in a2 i'm saying any words that come to you 
ice cream. So it could be melt, it could be waffle, it could be again picnic, it could be children. Anything that comes, they can fill in the words. There are around 10, 10 or 12 uh, circles here. You can choose to write it here itself and you can choose to stick something else on them. That brings an end to the first one. I hope an enjoyable one on ice cream. The second one is called Brain Quest. Now, we go to a very technical point, but it's a lovely point where our brain is divided into two hemispheres. Same way our heart is divided into four chambers, two primary chambers, and then the auricle and the ventricle. The hemispheres are the right and the left brains. The right brain is responsible for all creative function. So anything that is creative, and we'll describe that in a moment, the left brain is responsible for all logical function. So what we have done in A4, which is a primary activity of this exercise, is we have said that choose the words which fit in the right and the word which fit in the left. I think the children can take the markers, the pencils, the pen and start drawing lines. So say reasoning. Reasoning, is it an analytical activity or a creative activity? Well, when you reason, you're doing both, right and the left brain. So probably you'll put reasoning in the middle here. Music is a very creative activity, isn't it? So music will go to the right part, which you see the colorful part of the brain. So you can put there in the colorful. Colors, very clearly it's the colorful part. Keep doing it. Remember, there are no right and wrong answers. So don't get too worried if you suddenly are unable to think logic. Where does logic come? Of course, logic is an analytical activity, a left brain activity. But if you have to put somewhere, the moment you do right and wrong, you are thinking with your left brain. So be a right brainer. Daniel Pink and I would like you to do a small thing. Write this quote on the big whiteboard that you have got. He writes that the illiterates of the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write. The, they are the ones who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. So what he is basically saying is the 21st century belongs to storytellers and creative people. And the jobs that we will describe will be among that. So this is A3 and A4 activity in terms of brain quest. Now if I were to give you a side activity along with it, that is where I want to teach you about mindset. Mindset is a research by a lady called Carol Dweck and she said that people have two kind of mindset. One who says your intelligence is fixed and one who says intelligence can grow. So the one who says it's fixed is called fixed mindset and the one who says grow is called growth mindset. Put a small chart, teach these two words to them. Your kids will be thankful to you because of something great you're teaching. Then you bring a, a, a brain. Now it's a three pound of you know neurons and flesh inside your skull. And this is a brilliant activity. I want you to do that. If you can't make a brain, use some cotton, dip it in some color and make it or use a thermocol. You know, I would really, I would like you to bring a model of a brain. And then you explain that brains have something called connections which are called neurons. The more you use the neurons, the better your brains become. So for example, a taxi driver and a bus driver. You see a bus driver goes from one specific route. It's a case study I want you to do with your kids and ask them who has better neural connection. The bus driver, although is more responsible, is more people, but his routes are fixed. So he only sees one kind of a, a street. But a taxi driver has to go from any end of the city to any end. There are more neurons being happening. So it's the same way a taxi driver's brain is more connected because he's doing more things. If you learn how to fly a kite, if you learn how to write, if you learn to read, if you do an extempo, if you're doing some robotics, if you're also painting, if you join a swimming class, if you love reading, if you're watching something on online, if you're playing a game, suddenly everyone is creating a new pathway, a new neural network, and that's how brain grows. Every time you do something new, your brain will and can grow. And that is an amazing discovery I want your kids to understand. If you just teach the word mindset and show them how brain grows, how the neural network increases, you can use a play DAO to create this brain and show them that brains can grow, not literally, but through neural network. Then what you do is make a small box, a quadrant, in the quadrant, you write things I can do in three quadrant. For example, I can write, I can sing, I can swim. In the fourth quadrant, I want to. Something you have to learn. I want to learn cycling. I want to learn public speaking. I want to learn, you know, something else, a uh, computer coding. 
in the three quadrants that you wrote what you know write down how did you learn how to know how did you learn how to cycle how do you learn how to write so i use a pen i use a crayon first i i, I trace the letters then i i wrote something on the own then i learned spelling i wrote the spelling i practice hard now i can write effortlessly using the same process write how will you learn or teach yourself a new skill believe me it's a long exercise it's an amazing exercise and your kids are learning a trick how to improve the neural network perhaps this is one of the most important exercise you will do in the entire life skill curriculum in yellow in each one i'm proud of it because this is what we are teaching you here as an adult you can learn from it so this is your a3 and a4 let us go ahead to the last of the third activity in creative thinking a5 and a6 what we are saying is how were post it notes invented a lot of things were invented by accident so you know you know the same thing like velcro so sometimes it's important to just keep trying something new creative people are not afraid of failures for them failure is just another word or another way of doing something differently so why do you use post it notes of course for this you will require resources and these resources are post it notes so you use them to remember things take notes highlight pointers so now what we're doing is we've taken a simple movie called the transformers and i've just taken a little paragraph from the movie review you have autobots you have the decepticons the intergalactic races they are fighting with their auto robots the cars that become and if you're not a transformer fan become one because your kids almost are you know there are these amazing uh, robots amazing robo cars that have names so if you don't know the names start learning some of the names isn't it right so optimus prime is one of them and just read the paragraph and i want them to now do a posted note of a small review one of the note can say the name of the movie was transformers what does it mean what are they transforming into number 2 they can say some names that they can find so optimus prime is one of them the other bumblebee is another one find out go online as many transformers as you have Number three, which planets do they come from? So go to little intergalactic race and find out a little about them. Number four, what kind of cars do they transform themselves into? So it is, you know, these are these huge trailer trucks that are very popular in Australia, but they can also become into Ferrari, can they? These will be your four major tasks on a post-it note. Of course, if you don't want to invest in a post-it note, a simple yellow note would also be nice. But try teaching something new to them. Now, do you know only four I gave you? there can be 10 more extra activities that you can prepare from it number 1 like the transformers from intergalactic where are the other people from intergalactic you can talk about et old star wars stranger things very popular now on netflix or you can also talk about avengers which every kid will know number 4 you can do number 2 in the side activities the cars that they have become what other cars would you like them to become into perhaps you want them to become into a fiat or a toyota or a lexus or something on a harley davidson bike let them write brainstorm tell them to make a new transformers design one draw one and then see if they can convert into a car i'm sure some of the kids have a toy where transformer is becoming a car before this activity ask them to bring it to class and you can show different mechanical parts believe me children who love bmws and cars can actually learn so much about cars just by seeing the transformers One last thing you can do with Transformers is, of course, download a movie, play it on one of the streaming videos on YouTube, and play a video and discuss it. It's an amazing series. It's something we will love to talk about it. The last thing is how creative people are. They can think think of Transformers like movie, and they can make it a popular thing, and people start believing. Fiction, fantasy, this genre is really taking forward. What about you? What do you like about Transformers? Have you watched Transformers? Have you asked about the history of Transformers? And yet, it's about a hero helping save the world. So you know, uh, so many tangents can be talked about. It's just creativity. We've touched upon three different themes with creativity. We spoke about the first one on simple necessary ice cream as a food. Then we went to mindset and brain, and the third one we went about accidental discoveries. And the last thing on accidental discoveries, find out at least five new things that were discovered accidentally. Penicillin is, of course, one of them. I mentioned Velcro. There may be few more things that I have not talked about. Radioactive or radium is another one, and it will be amazing science discovery.
creative juices flowing in this activity. Hope you enjoy and give us your feedback. Thank you so much from here, Sky Education team. Hello and welcome to Candle Yellow. In a second theme called the Newsmakers, we are taken up a new thing called adventure. Of course, when we talk about newsmakers, we always talk about people in politics, in, in sports, people who made it big. But what about you as an adventurer? So we've taken up different themes and one of the idea of using adventure was life skills should not be restricted to only certain areas or aspects you improve on. Global knowledge is life skills too. So is having fun and adventure is a part of that fun. So the first one, B1 and B2, we're talking about a very, very popular, but often not spoken much about a sport, cycling. So we will talk about cycling in general after this exercise, and then we'll spend uh, more time on the side activities to it. And of course, by now you've guessed what I expect you to bring to the class. Every child can cycle, or perhaps you can bring at least one so they can have fun cycling around. Tour de City, Tour de France is the name of a popular you know, it's like it's like the Wimbledon of French or the FIFA World Cup of cycling. So you don't have to be from France though or named Lance to cycle. You can cycle all around. What I'm implying is Tour de France is a French popular game there. It's in France. And Lance Armstrong is the most popular cyclist or as he called bikeist to, you know, if he's like the Michael Schumacher of cycling. What we are asking you is look at the map of this current area and take a cycle and make a route so you can you know challenge go from a111 to a1010 what will you do where will you go through you might go through a park you might go through a hill you might have some kind of stoppage you might have you know areas to cross it's a great exercise to do on cycling and you know just you can make children make our own city map and then they can do cycle one of my strongest recommendation is to watch a video called the bikes path Bikes Part is a ABL, an activity-based project where children actually made a bike path for their own city. And this is something you can encourage them to do. If not, at least they can go and find out are a small exercise, are our streets safe to cycle? Cycling is one of the biggest and purest joy that you can have. What is this that you can do on cycling itself? You can also, as a teacher, listen to my own talk called The Bicycle Education available on Sky Education TV. And I believe you can get great lessons only on the joy of cycling. So when they have made a whole map, they're actually drawing a map of a city. Then they're making cycle paths. Then they're seeing areas. You can teach them about what I call blind spots, areas where cycles should not be driven, you know, or highways or bridges where you might exert yourself. So find smaller paths. It will be a great fun exercise. And of course, as I said, if you can bring a cycle to class, nothing like it where you can do small cycling exercises along with these entertaining areas where they can do cycling and then show when and the best way to cycle. One of the best exercises along with swimming is of course cycling and horse riding. And of course, both these things require resources. Cycling is the easier of the three. The another recommendation I would like to do is play a board game called Scotland Yard. Invest in Scotland Yard, which is something similar because it has a map of an entire London, the city with Hyde Park and Thames River, and it's a fun detective thing they can play. It's an adventure on a board game. Today, our kids are very addicted to mobile phones, and if you teach them a, the joy of board games, believe me, they'll become great analytical and creative learners. On B2, we have a picture of the magazine called Tour de France. And all I want is they can see to it and they can find and observe few things. What's the logo of Tour de France? You can see it's written Le Tour de France. What, it must be written in French. What do you think it means? What do the yellow signify? It says to be the winners of it get the yellow jersey. Similar way where you get green jackets in golf. So the yellow vest is the significance of the winners in Tour de France, the cycling race. Let the kids go out and find a little bit about this race. What are the team profiles? What are the, how is it played? You know, do they climb up? What do cycles look like? The gears in the cycle. You know, why, wh what do they do to get rehydrated? What are the dangers into it? What are the, who is the current leading champion? Which country is he from? What's the state of cycling in your city, in your area? Are there cycle clubs around? There's so much you can play only on this. 
it will be great exercise for the children to become a little adventurous and I hope after this they can pick up a cycling theme and they can cycle around in their own areas. So this was my first of the adventure newsmaker. My second newsmaker is B3 and B4 which is about another area going to an extremes of the, of the globe, the poles. Well, the earth is geospherical, right, like an ostrich egg and there are two poles to earth, the north and the south pole. So you can start talking about the adventure to these poles. There are enough YouTube documentaries that you can show them what poles look like. And one of the most amazing adventure is about North Pole, Robert Peary. Robert Peary is an American Navy engineer who reached the, the, the North Pole in 1909. It's almost, if I'm talking about 2019, it's 110 years before. What did he do? Who did he take along with him? You know, the Huskies, the, the, did he meet the, the Inuits, the Eskimos? Did he take sledges with him? What kind of ships and equipment he would have used at that time? Then, a more interesting and a really exciting story is the story of the race to the South Pole. There were two people in the race to South Pole. One, a British admiral, so British Navy officer by the name of Robert Perry. And the other one was, of course, the Norwegian Roald Amundsen. Now, uh, Robert Scott, I'm sorry, uh, this is Robert Scott. Robert Scott was a British uh, Na Navy Admiral Officer. He was so sure that he will reach because he was more funded. He had better equipment with him. He, you know, he was so determined that he forgot to go and understand the condition. Now, this is a great lesson. Royal Amundsen, in the other way, a Norwegian explorer, he spent two months only going and understanding the poles. He went alone, he went again, he went research. He did spend time researching. Meanwhile, Robert Scott went and only attended his parties, gave news reports, gave media interactions. And no wonder he lost. Not only did he lose, on the return journey, he lost his life. He was like that commander with a, remember? fixed mindset who was unwilling to listen to anybody. He said, I know the whole rules. You know, in fact, he was so sure about himself, so arrogantly sure of himself, he did not even stop his dogs for resting. The Huskies died in Robert Scott's uh, team. But Royal Amundsen understood his team. He took feedback. He spent time. He understood the challenges. He waited and he actually nourished his dogs and he was the right person to reach South Pole in 1926. I'm sure it's a great story. You can discuss the story with them. This is a storytelling part. Tell them the story. Hear it in a better way. I'll provide links to you. You can go on YouTube and find the fight to race to South Pole. It's a great story. But explain to them that it requires more than just the resources. On a parallel story, because we talk about the stories, similar story is about the race to flight. The first man to fly, of course, are the Wright brothers. The Two brothers, Wilbur and Oliver Wright. But uh, there is another person, there is another team funded by the MIT, by the US Army and yet the US Air, Air Force was funding them and yet Langley's lost. Why? Because the same way fixed mindset, he did not pay the passion, the why of it as, as you know Daniel Pink says, uh, the why of it was very missing in a very famous TED talk again by Simon Sinek that the Wright brothers had the why very clear. They wanted to fly for the joy of it. They were until the first people to tell people, to tell mankind that we could be also close to birds. Tell them these stories in B3. B4 because we are talking about the globe, the adventure. Why don't we develop an entire globe and mark it with imaginary lines. I am surprised that our children do not know where Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn are. They don't know the equator. They don't know the latitude and the longitudes. If they are to be fine about their own country, they will not know if it's above Capricorn or Cancer. So do that. You know, ask them simple question. Where is Australia? In the, in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? Where is India? Where is Brazil? What makes some countries tropical and equatorial? And this would be great geography lesson. Without burdening them, you can get a globe, a real globe. You can get strings so they can tie these about. Just don't draw a sketch, but do a physical activity so children enjoy, love, and they will not forget it for years to come. So this was the second of the exercises that we did on Newsmaker. The third one is 
a lovely one, something I was always admiring about and I always wondered why don't we teach enough about it is on states of United States of America. Now you might wonder what is U.S. to do with a, say a student studying in India or China or wherever this book is in Singapore. But believe me, USA is the most popular country today. And I'm not just talking about President Donald Trump or President Obama. They are great people and leaders that the world know about. In whatever way you like or dislike them, they will always be there in the news. But the Hollywood, you know, who does not know about the American companies? Google, Microsoft, you know. So America is always there. Uber, so Facebook. So you are talking so much about United States somewhere. Perhaps you know less about your own nation than about this country. So how much do you know about the states of United States? So we took an imaginary friend of ours, Alexander, who's rallying across United States on his Harley Davidson bike. Remember, we also put a lot of concept into adventure. You can change the bike to a bicycle, you can change it to a rental car, whatever you look like. Now, first of all, why don't we go and find out the facts about USA? Well, how many states do USA have? So if you have to reach from Florida to Washington, where are these states? So you see, Florida is the rightmost, the southernmost state of the United States on the extreme uh, east coast and they have to go towards west to Washington. Washington perhaps is where the DC is, find it about. There's so many states, the beautiful thing about this particular uh, B5 map of United States is it's not a graphical thing. So Michigan has a car, you know, Arkansas have a B. Texas is all about cowboys, so there's a ranch and a bull there. Um, New Mexico has hot air balloons. Arizona, because it's very, it's a desert, it's a cactus tree. California is all lovely areas with, you know, Vegas and stuff around. Where is New York in the extreme end? Something amazing about United States is the time zones. It's such a vast country that the time zones are different in the United States. China has five time zones. Find out what about the United States. What if you can do a huge blow of this particular thing, take a printout or you can see, you can if you do a flex printout and print it. Uh, a lot of our students or Indian students, especially in that context, are going to US in the Ivy Leagues to study. Where are the Ivy Leagues? Where is Hollywood? You know, find anything and everything you can find about the United States. Where are the headquarters of Google? Where is Silicon Valley? It will be amazing to just understand this country we have never understood before. The, the, the chart is clear, it's graphical, but I'll be so happy to find a little bigger one to it. For example, Alaska, where is it? It's, it's, uh, it should be Alaska, should be above, it's in Canada is, right? So find out where Alaska is. What about the flag of the United States, by the way? What is it called? It's called Star Sprangle Banner. How many stars? What does it represent? You know, there was a civil war in America between the South and the North. And how did they fight? Who is Abraham Lincoln? What is his role? The presidents of the United States. Why are they popular? You can find at least 10 presidents of the United States. Remember, in one of the other uh, edition, we spoke about Teddy Roosevelt, where Teddy Bear words come from. You know the George Bushes and Clintons. What about Ronald Reagan? What about J.F. Kennedy? One of the most popular presidents of America. So you can do an entire analysis of this amazing country, rich country, diverse country, a country of opportunities and dreams of, you know, of companies and markets and presidents and people and Hollywood and movies. So something you can do a lot about it. So B6 is just an addition to what we've been talking about. How would Alexander go? What stage would he cross? They can take a marker, mark around. Maybe it's a game you play. All right, what's all the blue ones? Who can tell me all the blue uh, flags and uh, the states? And they do, without turning back, can they remember? You know, you can take a printout of an empty map of uh, USA. And, you know, I don't want them to memorize it. But if they have fun knowing at least Florida and Washington and California and Texas, some of the popular ones, it will be great. Do they have cousins where, where they live in? Do they live in Houston? Where is Houston? Where is, uh, where is Georgia? So they can find out. Maybe you can do a Skype call to some of the cousins and say, look, I'm learning about this. What else can you tell about USA? Make sure the time zone. So don't call them in the midnight and, and then you say, oh, I forgot about it. Another thing about Harley Davidson. Yes, it has a cult and a culture of its own. As people tattoo the logo on the arms. What makes Harley so good? What is so special about this bike? make an entire adventure club we did an entire series on adventure from going in cycle and running to north and south poles until we did biking on the harley i hope the kids become adventurous maybe you can come up and do something extra play a football at the end to culminate adventure it'll be great tell me 
what you did show a photograph for us for sure for us to tweet and put it on facebook and instagram it'll be wonderful to you become an adventurous person after this cheers thank you hello and welcome to our candle yellow and this is a third theme the theme c on environment in keeping with lines of what today our children need to know on environment we chose the sub concept on poaching today animals are more endangered because of a humans intervening in their forests in their homes than any other cause actually in the world i just went and saw the movie called godzilla and it said even the titans have to come out and save the world from extinction the world is much better without us than us destroying it so what we want to talk about this is how do we create a love for these creatures and a hatred for their products the animal skins the tusk the the you know the entire antlers the way we kill an animal and that's what poaching will be doing as always we have divided ourselves into three themes and, and in this audio lesson plan i'll be teaching you more concepts in your entire class the first one as we talking about it says let's get into the mind of a poacher and this time we will not shoot them with a gun but with a camera so the concept and the topic is called keep on tracking what we going to do is we going to do a little hands on activity on what tracking is all about it's a very easy one you divide the players of teams into you know threes or fours depending on your class size of course you need an area where you can have sandy tracks each team is then given a card and the team goes to the sandy track where they establish a set of tracks that could belong to the animal on the card and if you look at c2 these are some of the tracks that you have so you can see you know opossum is more like a small ant eater or the beaver the deer is like a distinct hoof that can also be called a horse but the duck as a, as a you know the web feet feet of a duck is very distinct from a turkey which similar but the web is not there and similarly as you go ahead the bear is a larger one more of a human print with the pointed you see the nails on the bear or the claws on the animal as we find out so what they're going to do is now they're going to share and then find out other team set of track and they attempt to identify the animal being depicted the team with the most correct answers win of course it's a fun game you need not always have sand to do this you can also give this chart to them and say why don't you draw these animals and then once they are draw the other team have to guess it so it's as simple as this remembering what the animal track could look like it's a easy way of tracking the animal and then you can explain an entire theory that that's how the native people of african savannas or australian aborigines or native brazilian tribe in amazon rainforest they track the respective animal tracking is an act of patience is a act of lot of maneuvering lot of you know they need lot of skill set and this is what we are trying to do of course on c3 is a bigger chart and you can actually ask us on sky to find the color of chart of it a track of animal sizes and actually you know if you are to blow it up this could become actual sizes in the right proportion and if you look down in a very faint thing the colors are matched to it so the gray one goes to the elephant and there is a brownish one that can go to the giraffe and similar colors have gone through the children can actually the students can find the tracks find the animal related to it and over a period of time you can play a game on it a good diligent teacher would actually separate the track and then you can make a powerpoint presentation and ask each of the child to identify what animal they belong to the tracking concept is very simple but it creates a lot of awareness of how animals are you can talk about how are the carnivores different from a say the 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 hoofed animal the horses the cattle the bovine creatures or what about the chimpanzees the apes look at there they have a thumb like protrusion the green one on your c3 is for the chimpanzee and the gorilla the thumb how vital is a thumb to an animal like us so those are the areas you can start talking about in fact one of the great thing about humans is the use of the thumb and of course the story of eklavya when his master dronacharya actually asked for his thumb as a as a guru you know guru dhyana guru shikshas you know he wanted the thumb because guru dakshina is the word so you realize without the thumb we actually will not be able to send a whatsapp message you know that's what we do click 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 so this the perspective of that 
Now that's what we're trying to do is create an awareness in the skills that what has become redundant today. In this age today, there's some organs called the vestigial organs. Vestigial mm -hmm. organ is like the ear lobe. You know, you don't use it except for putting earlings. Oh, that, that's a beautiful thing. But what about the smallest toe on your on your feet actually there is a scientific study which says in some part remote part of indonesia uh, the children are going born without the toe because it's a vestigial organ the appendix in inside your stomach the guts is also a vestigial organ which is why it creates more harm but has no use of it so you just change the topic you just talk about it ask about what animals and what are the, the uses of these claws of the animals what is the difference with the hoofed animal or the giant palms of it, the elephant what about the camel the way it can slip on a sand and that's why it's called ship of the desert or or or, or the cheetah how sweet the pads are they can jump and you know the, the way it gives a momentum to run so the animal tracking guide is your conversation to start talking about these animals, start taking the conversation further, deeper, and hopefully by this time, they will become an accomplished animal guide. You know, one of the great ways is to sense an animal. Then you can also put the teams as a class into two or three teams and tell them what are the other tracking devices for an animal. Of course, one of the most important tracking device without the feet is the Yes, they're fierces, so they're shit. So you can actually decode an animal. Is it fresh? Is it, you know, is it late? Is it, the animal was here recently. Another one is, of course, the litter. The animals, when they lay the babies, you can find that, that. The other one could be a great hunting ground. So you can track your jackals and bears and foxes and other animals from the way they are being tracked as, as in a hunt. Was the hunt fresh? Is the hunt over? Or another, another tracking device is go near to the water source. So the most beautiful thing in the savanna is the animals, all of them would be drinking water at the same time. A lion when the stomach is full is not greedy or selfish. So you will not find a lion jumping on a zebra. Of course, along with that, you can watch the movie as a movie watches the jungle book. Mowgli. It's a great movie. At least the first 10-15 minutes where the animals are together and then Sher Khan comes in and how the jungle ecosystem lives on this delicate harmonious relationship. The animals survive and they want others to also survive. Now after having done the first part of it, let's go to C4 and C5. C4 and C5 is even a more interesting game. What we're saying is play the dumb shards. The dumb shards is what we've always done but we've never thought we can pick make it a game in a schools and a classes so build a dramatic animal skill divide the class into two and of course you can choose to whisper the name of the animal to the student and the animal has to guess that and obviously you get a minute to guess it and then you know you can't use any noise or make animal sound the the pictures are very really illustrative a good teacher what you can do is you can make a list of say 20 to 50 animals and the child comes and picks a chit of it it could be a mix of carnivores it could be a mix of herbivores could be pet animals so what you do is you create sometimes become a little easier sometimes be difficult so you start with elephants and tigers and lions and zebras and then you might go to anteaters and you might you know take it down to wolves and foxes and hyenas antelopes hippos uh, warthog so it's it's your choice and how a naturalist you are but now the more interesting part is in c5 now since the sharaz is is fun why don't you allow them to do a little more exotic animal so here it's not just a vulture it's called turkey vulture it's not just a lion it's a mountain lion which is distinct and very very different from a normal lion right it's not a tortoise it's a desert tortoise elephant of course it's an african elephant a red kangaroo a bald eagle canadian goose or a long fingered bat i love somebody to give that answer to me and i'm sure once the kids figure out the fun of sharads you can take and make new names by the way these are all real animals on a sub note what you can do is you can create you see you've got around 10 animals here you can divide the class into teams of two two big teams and tell them fine now you these red tail hawk a mountain lion a turkey vultures are all endangered animals all of these animals need protection what do you mean by endangered animals are in three distinct things one are safe animals another extinct animals there are two so safe animal for example is a zebra they are not being hunted they are enough proportion they can survive but the extinct animal is like the white rhinoceros which is no more or the doo doo they're extinct humans greed are poaching have actually killed them and then 
they are the endangered animals these animals if you don't act quickly if you don't help them like the whales like the tigers like the the elephants they will soon be extinct as well so what you can do is you can actually find out f about these animals so they can go online they can find what a mountain lion looks like where the, where is this live what is habitat what kind of food it eats where what it thrives and what is it dangered with you know so who are who are the ones who are killing them and they can even find a photograph or sketch or draw a photograph and they can make a class presentation let's say if you're a class of 20 ideally you give one of each to each and then give them 10 minutes to the research and they present the animal to the class it would make a great presentation and a love of the animal skills a last note on that and then we can skip to the next third activity is i mentioned about the endangered and extinct animal why don't you make a list of the animals that are popular and the what are they being killed for for example the rhinos are being poached for their horns the tiger for the skin the alligators for again the skin which is made of bear which which people make belts and leather things with the elephants very popular for their ivory the tusk so suddenly you are making a child understand the whales are being killed for the for the bladder that they have or just the animals like whales are being killed by Japan and Norway where for the food for the for the medicine that comes out of it so you are creating an awareness along with this environment poaching skill the final one on C6 to C8 is a specific project on tigers so what we have done is since we have spoken about a lot of endangered animals we said let's focus on one popular animal being a part of our country in india tigers are very very important and today there was a huge campaign done which we said there are only 1411 tigers left it was a great campaign and what we love to do is first you talk about the tigers why they are special what is the difference between a royal bengal tiger or the siberian tigers so tell about the tigers of the world there are there are approximately six species of tigers in the world and if you look at it most of the species and very common thing are asian species africa for all its natural wildlife do not have tigers they are lion dominated region and asia it has is a tiger population so you have the malaysian the sumatran tiger is the indonesian there is a south chinese tiger the indo chinese tiger and then the most popular the royal bengal tiger which is in india west bengal and bangladesh the sundarbans are, are the common sanctuary for it and the siberian tiger which are, is in the higher part especially in russia and not most of it so once you've done it why have been tigers poached so ideally tigers are you know uh, they should be in a sanctuary but then their skin is very very valuable there was a hunting expedition by the maharajas of the old who's gone a tiger hunt and then you can make folk tales what tigers are popular about so you can bring up a popular tiger story there is there are a lot of stories around you know there is one which is called the the christian and the tiger where he meets a tiger in the gladiator area the same tiger he has helped remove the thorn and the tiger licks his feet the same story is with the lion as well so you can choose your animal but what we are trying to do here is we are trying to create a campaign around the tiger so how would you save the tigers so we we, we c7 and c8 talks a lot about the campaign what can you do about it spread the word so you can start by joining save our tigers movement on facebook twitter or youtube or ideally you know if your children are smart with technology or mobile phone you can allow them to make a small viral video why should they save the tiger then you can ask them to compose a twitter message or an sms where you can say write a very appealing meaningful purposeful message with 140 characters on saving the tiger if the message is really done well you can actually put it on facebook and also allow them to spread across in some profile one another thing is write letter to the editor of popular magazine it could be nature magazine discovery magazine or even a local newspaper on why tigers are so important and what can be done to help them you can encourage children to donate to the tiger the wwf world wildlife wildlife federation or the jim corbett foundation i would like to diverge and do a small biography on this great person the jim corbett jim corbett was a britisher who came and settled down he has now a national park named after him he earlier was hunting tigers the man eaters at some point he realized that these are and what he called them large hearted gentlemen he called tigers this and he actually did amazing work on conserving these animals 
he was called you know the gora sahab the jim corbett story is wonderful you can pick a campfire book go on a blog on a wikipedia and get his story you must share jim corbett story and what he did for the tigers C8 we speak about a little more volunteering for tigers be a part of the NGOs the beautiful beast needs you little more history of the tigers why don't they actually do a small presentation on what tigers mean for us and how beautiful this natural creatures are as you close this you can always show a youtube video on a tiger perhaps a documentary or ask the students to speak or make a poem on a tiger and why did it send to us at sky we'll post it on our social media and make sure that we create enough noise for this amazing large hearted gentleman thank you that's the entire thing on environment and poaching